I'm Jax Mackey, and I've had this van now for almost a year. Been working on it for about seven months total. And I'm at a point now where I'm more or less uh, testing out the systems and adding some creature comforts, various things like that. Uh, but unfortunately, I got a pretty good scare uh, a few days ago, and I discovered that I had um, a huge major problem uh, with my electrical system here. Now, if, if you can't quite tell what's going on here, uh, we've got some melted plastic and some charred uh, wire here, which is, <laughs> to say the least, uh, pretty scary. All right, so today we're in Janesville, Wisconsin at Walt Lindemann Sportsman's Park. And what we're gonna do here is, first of all, I wanna get out of the house, um, do something different. For a change and also I want to test the systems on the van um, so we're gonna hang out here for a while and uh, make some lunch early dinner if you will but you know the cool thing about this park located in Rock County Wisconsin is the fact that it's got a, uh, a, a deer preserve here so they've got a little uh, an area fenced off and they got uh, I don't know six eight deer or so inside the fenced in area, so we're gonna go have a peek at those guys. All right, so we got the van, we got the van backed up here, right, right in a nice spot. And of course, right away, what do we got hanging out here? It is, uh, looks like a buck. Yep, that's definitely a buck. No, no antlers, no horns this time of year. But at any rate, there's at least one in here. So pretty nice little setup here, if if I don't say so myself. Kind of off, off the beaten path, not right in the city limits or anything like that. So not very busy today for sure. There's only a couple of cars. So we're gonna hang out here, make some lunch and uh, test this van out, test the systems out. Uh, really wanna work over this electrical system, make sure everything's working right and, uh, and all that, so. cool things I added in um, just today actually was this um, multi-purpose temperature uh, system here so what we've got is um, this is the current temperature inside the van and then I've got three remote um, sensors set up so this is the fridge this is the freezer and this is the electrical compartment where the inverter is. So I can keep an eye on the temperatures in there and see exactly what's happening uh, if I you know, encounter an issue or whatever. So it uh, looks like our fridge is at about 36 degrees Fahrenheit, Fr freezer's at 19. Um, so that's well below freezing, so that's in pretty good shape. I can switch this to um, Celsius as well. And then there's a memory function here which tells me the maximum temperature it's red and the minimum temperature it's red. So, uh, but at any rate, that's cool. So I got those in the fridge and freezer. And then the other one is down here uh, in the engine compartment, sorry, the electrical compartment so I can keep an eye on the temperatures there. All right, cool. Uh, so what do I got here? Um, I've got some chicken breast, uh, some uh, baby bella mushrooms, uh, green pepper, some onion, I got some chicken stock, and I got some cornmeal. So, uh, what I'm going to make is um, I'm going to make some polenta. Uh, I'm going to fry a chicken breast, and I'm going to have some mixed vegetables on top of that. So, uh, let's see what we can do here. <laughs> All right, let's go with some uh, salt, pepper, and we'll do a little, um, a little garlic powder, onion powder, and we're going to 
gonna flip this guy over. Salt, pepper, garlic, onion. Mm. Got some onions, got some uh, portobello mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Alright, so I've got the, uh, the cornmeal and uh, chicken stock on the back burner. I've got a timer set for five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, squoosh that around a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and cook these veggies. Now, I'm not quite sure um, I'm not quite sure the temperature is on these uh, on the settings. I'm going to play it by ear. Salt and pepper. Toss a little butter in there too. I don't know if this spatula is silicone or not, so if I uh, burn it up in the pan, I guess it's I guess it's a le lesson learned. All right, so that's coated nice with the oil, so let that simmer for a minute. All right, so old polenta is coming along pretty nice. And we got to get the hot pan here for hot pan for the chicken. Chicken with a flip. Keep an eye on this plant as it's starting to thicken up a little bit. All right, let's say we uh, we plate this guy, huh? Alright, well we're going to eat all those vegetables, but uh, as far as plating is concerned...
There we go. Hell yeah. All right, so I think dinner was a success. I went ahead and piled all those veggies back on there. We got a chicken breast and polenta. All right, so um, one of the things that I wanted to do, uh, have, have in the vehicle, have in the van, is one of these TDS meters. Uh, I see these a lot um, on on a lot of sailing channels because they're actually making their own water out of the seawater. So total dissolved solids is a pretty important number to keep track of. So that way their water is you know safe to drink. Um, and because I'm going to be running water from who knows where, you know, it would be nice to kind of have an idea, um, you know, what that water is going to be like. Now, I did a quick search and it looks like, you know, recommended values are below 500, uh, 300, below 300 is even better. So what I did is I went ahead and I'm going to check, I poured myself a glass of my tap water, which is well water. Um, I've had this well since... Uh, since I bought the house about 29 30 years ago and I've been drinking that water with no consequence as far as I'm concerned <laughs> um, but with that said I'm gonna test it and see what the total dissolved solids is for um, my well water all right so it's pretty easy to use you just turn it on and stick it in the water and it looks like uh, it says it's 260 so that's well below 500 and of course below the 300 so that's just straight out of the tap now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and, and use my drinking water uh, faucet and well actually what I should do is try right straight out of this tap which would be basically my well water out of my holding tank into the glass and then I'll go ahead and I'll test the drinking water which goes through the reverse osmosis system so 260 for my tap water. All right, so this is um, right out of the tank. So that's telling me 288. So it's a little bit, you know, got a little bit more uh, dissolved solids in there from the tank. So, you know, okay, it's still underneath 300, still underneath 500. And now we're gonna check uh, our drinking water which goes through this reverse osmosis system and we're gonna see what what reading that brings us Woo! 36 <laughs> that's pretty amazing that's pretty amazing 36 total dissolved solids per million I think that's what that equates to so that's, uh, that's good news. I mean, that's good to know. I mean, that really uh, tells me that that filter is working, working pretty well. So the other day I was um, trying to figure out why um, a USB uh, speaker system wasn't working. I picked up this little uh, USB uh, speaker to go underneath my monitor. And unfortunately, the PC is on the other side of the truck to where the monitor is, so I need like a 20-foot USB extension. Unfortunately, the speaker is... It wouldn't recognize the speaker uh, with the extended USB cable. Now, I'm suspecting that it has to do with the lack of USB power at that distance. Um, I did try a couple of different uh, cables uh, but both of those, both of those cables um, didn't quite cut it. Um, but in the process of checking all this out, um, I basically I tore apart the van, opened up the cabinets, and because I, I had to run uh, the USB cable from where the the computer is over and down underneath the truck, and then over and up here to where the monitor is. And while I was scratching my head about the USB problem, um, I was poking around down here and had a gander, and I discovered that I had um, a huge major problem uh, with my electrical system here. Now, if, if you can't quite tell what's going on here, uh, we've got some melted plastic and some charred uh, wire here, which is, <laughs> to say the least, uh, pretty scary um, could have had an electrical fire and basically could have you know lost the, the entire van 
um, to this. Now, I'm looking at this like, what's the root cause of this? Do I have the right proper cabling? Um, is it, you know, sized correctly? Is it, uh, is there a problem with the fixture, the fuse holder? Um, and at once I shut the power down and I got looking at it and realized that this connection is hand tight. So there's no other way for this uh, connection to be loose within the fixture. It was uh, effectively I either didn't tighten it um, correctly or it worked loose over the course of a few outings that I had but either way um, the reason for the short has to do with a loose connection and you know it, it just caused heat because of that and so we're gonna have to make this repair and definitely go through um, and check all of our our wiring connections on all of everything to make sure that everything's um, tight and a proper connection so I got um, I got a new a new uh, fuse fixture here um, now looking at this fuse you know we kind of determine you know was it the fixture that caused and maybe the fixture heated up and that's what caused the loose connection or was it just uh, you know perhaps my my negligence for not you know properly tightening it up but as you can see there is a um, a nut on top of the plastic so realistically that fastener is just you know sort of glued into the plastic it's not like coming in from the underside of it so where if the plastic were to melt there would be a loose connection there that's not the case so I think basically what I've determined that I, I just didn't tighten that up properly or at all uh, so I've got some replacement uh lugs we can go ahead and put on there uh, we'll just cut that cable short and then um, replace that lug and we should be in pretty good shape Okay, so I went ahead and I uh, I looked over all my connections, uh, checked them all to make sure everything was nice and tight. Um, so we should eliminate any future uh, problems with that application. And then the other question that I had, which, you know, basically reassurance that I've got this sort of um, wired correctly um, especially in terms of the the right gauge wire it's important to, to note that on a 12 volt system or on any electrical system that you you know you use the appropriately sized wire for your application so what I've got here is is a table uh, that tells me you know what is required for the length of uh, of wire a gauge wire for the length of run that i'm going to be using now if you just have a look inside this cabinet you'll realize that there isn't much more than 10 feet um, of cable you know in this this area from the batteries to the uh, to the inverter charger so that's really what's the most important part about what I'm looking at at the moment. And so with a with a, um, a circuit length of 10 feet, and even if I'm pulling uh, 100 amps, I still would only need 4 gauge, but I've actually got 
two gauge. So I'm actually oversized um, even for a hundred amps. And, and I don't I don't think that I'm gonna ever pull a hundred amps in this in this fan between the induction cooktop, the refrigerator, and the PC and monitor, um, which are the the big 120 uh, 20 volt draws. Um, and, and, and of course the 12 volt system, the lights and stuff, that's pretty minimal, but I don't think that I'm gonna be pulling um, 100 amps. So I know that my cables are sized, um, oversized for this particular application. So that just is a reassurance that this, uh, you know, having a burnt wire down here um, was more of a situation where the connection was loose as opposed to an undersized cable. So that makes sense. Okay, now that I got the electrical uh, system sort of figured out again, got that organized again, got that back together, um, refrigerators cooling down the freezers starting to freeze again i had to actually pull you know everything out of there i had a bunch of food in there so i had to pull all that out of there before it, you know went the hell heck in the hand basket so uh we'll let that cool down and we can get back to testing you know the the systems and whatnot but what i've got now is uh i went ahead and this was the speaker that i picked up to use for my monitor before now it's you know quite, quite small uh, but I went ahead and, and I upgraded to this one uh, which is quite a bit bigger and it also is it comes with um, the USB power but it's also it, it works off of the uh, 3.5 millimeter um, connection so what I can do is I can hook this through my monitor HDMI so I'll have audio come through the HDMI cable and connect to this into the speaker system so then I won't have to worry about a separate USB um, at all it'll be HDMI so that'll be uh, that'll be next now we just got to figure out how I'm gonna mount how I'm gonna mount uh, this this monitor because it's quite a bit bigger and the reason I bought this little one was because it had this um, this clip on here which it's kind of hard to show with one hand, but this would clip onto a onto a monitor, uh, specifically a laptop, uh, because it's real tiny. Um, it didn't really work that well on on a full size monitor. So at the end of the day, it's it didn't work out. But this 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 kit here uh, will will mount underneath uh, something like this. So we'll have to figure out how I'm going to uh, get that fastened up, whether I just use Velcro or uh, actually make something to hang off of that. More in the package. It would have been ideal to do a, a, a six stack. So 12 pieces would have been awesome. All right, cool. Uh, I've got that sorted. I went ahead and um, I went ahead and upgraded already. I brought this down, I brought the 27 down just to make sure that um, I can mount this uh, speaker assembly appropriately. Um, and then I was just going to take it back up to the house and just go ahead and, and uh, you know, put it back. But I figured, heck with it, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this 27 inch here. And I'll take the 24 and I'll just use the 24 um, at the desk. Uh, but all, all I did for this mounting of this is uh, Velcro. So this is just held up by Velcro. Uh, and that's it. It's, it's powered. Uh, we'll put some, um, some kind of finish on there. I've got some leftover powder loud I could enough. probably throw on there just to keep them somewhat, you know, whether they're Definitely doesn't need to go enough. too loud because for the simple fact that, uh, well, you know, neighbors and all that kind of other stuff. Um, but all in all, I, I've got everything sort of worked out. Um, so yeah, PC's working fine. I got the Wi-Fi working at the house. Uh, the inverter charger is back on board again with the new, uh, the new fuse block. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now I can start putting this, uh, putting this van back together, if you will. All right, so I've kind of made this cabinet, um, my, 
my electronics cabinet, if you will. So I've got a couple of pieces of Velcro up in the back of the cabinet and of course on the back of the keyboard. So all I got to do now is just, you know, squish this back up in here and boom, um, it stays up and out of the way. And of course the mouse can go up in here too as well. Uh, so one of the other things I want to do um, with this space is I've got um, some rechargeable batteries and a rechargeable uh, panel here that uh, I think is pretty slick. We can do eight at a time, both A and triple A. Um, don't, I doubt we'll ever need to go, you know, eight batteries at a time, um, but that's that's the charger that I, I picked up. And then I've got um, double A's and triple A rechargeable battery cells. So what I want to do is get these up off of the off of the bottom here too and you know make a spot for them over here uh, on the wall with some velcro and that will keep those up out of the way and um, easily uh, accessible uh, I can just reach in there and grab one of those off and, and then that will be it so there we go all right so I was gonna wrap up this video um, with showing you all how I uh, modified this bug screen that I bought uh, to fit the van um, but unfortunately and fortunately uh, I didn't have to modify it at all uh, it actually fit pretty well uh, to the back of the van I was really surprised now this is a it's a single car garage bug screen and the size is pretty 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 good it's uh, eight about eight feet wide by seven feet tall and I didn't have to really uh, do much with it at all now it comes with uh, it comes with velcro so uh, velcro for the sides uh, and then a, a, a wider strip of velcro uh, for along the top edge there and it, it's extra long so there's plenty of velcro uh, now what I've done here is uh, because it's a little bit long I wrapped it around and then I uh, held back um, this edge here and then brought it to the close to the edge here because I do have these handles um, and I didn't really want to remove those handles uh, and so they can stay there uh, but I just gave it some extra room um, and then it just comes down around now the bottom isn't exactly a you know a perfect uh, bug fit bug free fit maybe we can we can set something down on here or whatever to get it to, to fit a little bit better but I mean for the most part it uh, it fits really well and it works really well uh, these are just magnets um, you just pulls open and then when you uh, let it go it just uh, magnets right back together so that's pretty nice so that'll keep out uh, the majority of the bugs anyways if I'm just sitting and hanging around um, so I mean that was an addition that I wanted to add to the van uh, but I wasn't quite sure how big bulky how difficult uh, was it gonna fit um, how am I gonna modify it uh, this these were things um, these were things that I was thinking about last fall when I decided to keep the roll-up door um, and I knew that I wanted it open and I knew that there was going to be bugs and I'd probably want some sort of bug screen uh, of some sort but I did do some uh, minor research uh, and you know these garage door screens did pop up um, on the radar but I didn't really look that close at them it was something that I didn't want to worry about then because it wasn't really a priority um, I've had a couple of comments um, here on the videos and also on my uh, Twitter 
regarding uh, the bug screen thing. And like I, I said, I, I, I had done some research on it, but I wasn't settled on anything. And there are a variety of these, um, and they, they vary in size. The one that I picked up was about $33 US, and, and I, I, it was money well spent. Um, I don't think I could have come close to that um, trying to make one myself. Uh, the Velcro alone is, you know, $15, $20, you know, and then so then the fiberglass screen. So we'll see how it holds up. I mean, it isn't something I'm going to leave on the van when I'm, you know, traveling or moving. Um, it's just when I find a spot I want to hang out and if it seems like it's a little bit too buggy, well, then we'll, we'll put it up. So, but I think that's it. That's where I'll wrap this video up. I do appreciate you guys coming and hanging out and uh, checking out my videos. I appreciate that. If you like uh, what you see, perhaps consider subscribing. And uh, uh, with that, uh, I'll see you guys uh, on the next one. Thanks.